allow your objective competence to become a part of you. As I mentioned earlier, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a serious problem. It leads to all sorts of funny and not-so-funny results and situations. Unfortunately, a lot of people who are otherwise competent tend to compartmentalize their competence. They think that they are very good at packing boxes at a factory, but that's at the factory. That's just one part of them. In the big scheme of things, that area of competence really isn't all that important. So what do you think happens? These people have low self-confidence, low self-esteem, and they have a fairly bleak picture of who they are as a person, what they're about, and what they're capable of doing. Sad, but all too common. They're too quick to dismiss or diminish their areas of objective competence. I can't even begin to tell you how many people that I've met who are really good at one area of their life or one section of their work, but for the rest of their lives, they feel that they suck and they let it eat away at them. It really is quite sad. Well, the point of this training is to use areas of competence to give you genuine, sustainable self-confidence. You're going to have to destroy that tendency to compartmentalize. How? Celebrate your objective competence. The first thing that you need to do is to understand in full emotional terms that you're looking at something real. Your competence is packing boxes, writing reports, dictating articles, transcribing, writing books, doing data entry, or what have you, is real. You do a good job on them. How do you know? You produce a certain amount of output and you can see the quality of the work that you do. This is objective. This is not just in your head. You can tell from the objective results that you get. You're not just dealing with the opinions or estimations of yourself. Now that you realize that this is objective, real, and supported by external feedback, think about it some more. Think about your objective results more. Focus on the number. Think to yourself, I used to do only one. Now I'm doing two or three. My output used to be full of grammatical mistakes. Now my stuff is smooth. Whatever the case may be, wrap your mind around your objective results. Let it sink in. Be as clear as possible regarding the quality that you are able to achieve. Feel good about your objective results. Let it sink in so much that it feels good. Tell yourself this truth. Other people can't do this. If you are a writer and you are writing or dictating 10,000, 20,000, 100,000 words a day, few other people can do that. After all, a lot of people think writing is a hobby. They'll get to it when they can get to it. You, on the other hand, crank this stuff out regardless of whether you feel like it or not. Regardless of whatever else is going on in your life, you are able to do it on time, every time. That's something to feel good about. If you work in a factory and you meet quota every single day, that's something to feel good about. How come? Well, your boss probably holds meetings about the fact that a significant portion of the workplace cannot consistently meet quota. If you're a business person, the fact that you are able to close a certain number of sales every month is something to feel good about because not all business people are able to do that. In fact, a lot of business people struggle because of peaks and valleys in their sales volume. Find something to feel good about your objective results. Again, these have to be objective. These have to be reduced to numbers. These are not lies, opinions, or estimations. These are your objective results. Feel good about them. Keep repeating to yourself, not everybody can do this. For example, if you are a writer that dictates your books, articles, and blog posts, not everybody can look at two sentences and dictate a whole book out of that. Celebrate what you've got going for you. If you are a person who transcribes, not everybody can get the context of what the speaker is saying and transcribe it in such a way that captures the essence of the passage. Pat yourself on the back. Not everybody can do what you're doing. In fact, the more focus you put into your craft, the more sunlight you put between you and the next person. That's how good you are. You're special. Talk about your objective results. It's one thing to feel good about your objective results. It's another to actually talk about it. Tell your friends about your work, what you do, and the things you're able to do. Now, please understand that how you say things is just as important as what you have to say. You don't want to come off as some sort of blowhard. You don't want to beat them up with this information, but be proud of what you do. Talk about the details of your job so people can say, okay, you know certain things that I don't. If they're really your friends, they would be interested. This would be fascinating to them because they do the same to you. Let your positive estimation or opinion of the objective results that you're getting in one area of your life change the way you talk. Focus on a sense of mastery and ownership. If you change the way you feel and talk about the objective results that you are getting from one area of competence, you start changing your mind about it. You no longer compartmentalize it. You're no longer dismissing it as one part of your life that doesn't really mean much of anything. Instead, it becomes clear to you that at least in this particular area of your life, 
you're getting a sense of mastery and ownership. This is a big deal. Now you are making serious progress. You're no longer looking at that item as an empty detail that is just part of who you are. No. Instead, it becomes a source of objective validation of the fact that you can take ownership and mastery over your life. Right now, it might be a faint glimmer. The outlines may not be all that well defined, but you sense that it is there. This is objective. This is real. Allow yourself to be confident. Once you're able to focus on a sense of mastery and ownership, confidence naturally flows. The moment you realize these two things, you start saying, I can statements to yourself. I can make things happen that meet a certain standard. I can overcome challenges consistently. I can decide and things pan out based on my choices and ideas. If you can't feel confident about these statements, just wrap your mind around the fact that a lot of people cannot make these statements. In fact, these statements don't even occur to them. They just focus on making it to the next day or they're just focused on the big victory that they are hoping in vain for. They don't focus on the areas of competence they already have. Repeat this to yourself. I can, I can, I can. The two words in that phrase celebrate your individuality, your ownership of your reality and your power to assert your will over your reality. Big stuff, heavy stuff, real stuff. Act confidently more often. In the previous steps, you're feeling good about your objective results. You're talking about them. Deep down inside, you hear this echo of, I can, I can, I can. This is all great, but like I keep saying in this training, the world doesn't care about your feelings. That's right. Your emotions are just like everybody else's emotions, meaningless. The world pays attention to what you do, so you have to translate all that I can into acts of confidence. Act confidently. I repeat it again and again. Act confidently more often. Keep increasing competence in your target area. Nail it. It can be an inch wide, but boy, you need to make it miles deep. The more competent you become, the more confident you get. The more you repeat, I can, the higher your estimate of your ability to get things done according to your will. The more confident you get, the more challenges you take on. This is very important. Real confident people don't just sit back and say, oh, I could do that, but I'm not going to do it. No, you're just fooling yourself. You're just a blowhard. Real confident people look at challenges as a way to build up their competence. They know what they're about. They look at challenges as opportunities. It doesn't scare them. People who are just blowhards, arrogant, or people suffering from brittle self-esteem talk a good game. They talk big, but the moment the challenge appears, they get scared. They run away like little boys. You, on the other hand, look at the challenges and stare them straight in the eye and take them on because you know that they are opportunities. The more of these you take on, the more likely you will succeed. Now, please don't get me wrong. The first few times, you'll probably fall flat on your butt. That's just the way things are. You only need to look at the time when you first learned how to ride a bike. Chances are, you probably did not get it the first time around. But you kept trying and trying until eventually you were able to bike away. The same applies to these opportunities. The more problems you solve, the more competent you become. The more competent you become, the stronger that I can statement becomes and your estimation of what you're capable of increases tremendously. Keep repeating the process above because it creates an upward spiral. The more competent you become, the more confident you become. The more you try things leads to even more competence and even more confidence, and on and on it goes.